Hi, I'm Anna, Ableton Certified Trainer. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can apply split band processing to a baseline in Ableton Live. With this technique, we can gain a great control over our baseline as we can keep the more subby bottom end nice and centered, while we can apply more creative, even widening processing to our mids. So, let's get started. We're going to start with a re-C bass that I've created in analog. Now, we are going to split this bass sound into two bands, the low subby frequencies and then the mids. And to do that, the first step is that we're going to select this analog device, we're going to right click and then choose to group it into a instrument track. And in the instrument track, if we open the chains, then now I'm able to duplicate my existing chain so I can have parallel processing on both of these chains at the same time. So the first chain is going to be our sub band and then the second chain is going to be our mid band. So we're going to start with the sub, so I'm going to solo that chain, go into analog and disable the second oscillator and then in the first one change the waveform to sine wave. This is what it sounds now. I suggest to use headphones for this video, by the way. So now, the first thing we're going to bring in is an EQ8. And I'm going to go ahead and just roll off all the frequencies around 100 hertz or so. Once that's done, we can go ahead and bring in dynamic tube, where we're going to create some distortion to get a little bit of harmonics even though it's a sub bass so let's set the drive the tone the bias and then the envelope and according to that the attack and the release and now it sounds like this without it great so i'm happy with that so the next thing is just going to be utility on the same chain still, just to make sure that this chain is super mono and narrow. That's it for our sub band. Let's switch to the mids and start processing it. So the first thing I'm bringing in is an EQ again, and I'm going to do the opposite of what I did to the sub band. I'm going to roll off everything below about 100 hertz. Cool, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the vinyl distortion device just to add a little different flavor to the mids than we did for the sub. We're only gonna be using the pinch distortion. This gives a great stereo image. So we started to widen this band. Next up, we're bringing in the saturator for some extra harmonics. I'm gonna use it with the wave shaper and we're gonna open up the extra little controls that we can gain access to, add some drive and just set this up to our taste really. We can't really go wrong here. Set the curve here, that adds the daughter's harmonic. A bit less drive. Change the depth. Change the wave shaper's position. Bit of noise gate here. And the repose that was created by the depth control. very dirty. I think we're ready to move on. Next up we're gonna add some um, noise so we're gonna bring in erosion and we're gonna set it to add some white noise in particular. Great so now we're gonna bring in OTT just to add some weird multiband compression. Let's set it back there. That's enough. And then moving on, we gotta bring in the chorus device. 
And we're just gonna quickly set this up to our taste again. You can't really go wrong here either. You just really wanna thicken and widen the sound up. So change the rate, the amount, a little bit of the feedback. Maybe a bit less of it. Cool, so to top this up, we're gonna also bring in hybrid reverb. And the first place that we're gonna go to is the EQ section. So we're gonna roll off the low end even more. So we really just wanna tip into the mids and the higher mids. Great. Now we've finished processing the mid band, let's mix the sub and the mid band together. Yay, sounds super fat. So now we're gonna go ahead and process the entire rack together, so both chains. So I added auto filter. I'd really love to have this little movement um, some filter modulation to the sound. We could write this in as automation to a clip, but first we're gonna take a look at how else we can do that. So for that reason, I'm gonna bring in this little tool called LFO. And once we drop the device in, we're gonna see a sine wave, the LFO on the screen. We're gonna map this to the frequency cutoff on the auto filter. And now we have this. I find this a bit extreme, so we're gonna go ahead and actually assign minimum and maximum values to kind of have a range that the LFO can go between. So it's less extreme now. We can also change the rate, so I'm gonna sync it. I'm just gonna set this to one bar for now. The last thing we're gonna bring in is an EQ to process the whole rack both bands again. I'm gonna switch this to mid side so I can have further separation. So let's go first to the sides and I'm gonna roll off everything till around 200-ish hertz and then we can put on the little headphones to kind of hear. Hear what we are cutting to solo the band. Took a bit of that out, let's go to the sides. Take some of this out. I'm gonna map to these macros here, essential parameters, so I don't need to do this. Scroll left and right every time I need access to an important parameter of one of the devices. So I'm just gonna choose the first parameter, right click, and then hit map to macro one, and then go to the next one, map to macro two. Um, let's go to erosion, map the amount to macro three, and then the amount of the OTT, the amount of the chorus, and the amount of the reverb. And if we go back to the macros, then we can go and right click and rename the macros. And in the same place, we can right click and recolor them as well for better navigation. So solo the low band, the mid band, both. We can also control the blend of the two chains by opening up in the mixer the instrument rack and using the faders. Mm. 
Amazing, there we go. Now let's check the basic context and some extra modulation that I've added. So in this clip, if we display the envelopes and the envelope for the LFO, then we can see that I automated the rate and we can also see that represented on the device itself. Just some extra movement. Hey, thanks for tuning into this video. I hope you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more. You can also find out more about me here and I hope I see you next time.